breastfeeding our mother's milk is the foundation for a healthy future over the years there are various studies and research that continue to reiterate this strongly breastfeeding is the best way to feed a child it's how nature has intended a new born infant to be fed and therefore undisputedly this is the best way to feed an infant both who and unicef recommends breastfeeding should be initiated within an hour after birth with exclusively feeding for the next 6 months and then continuing along with appropriate complementary foods up to 2 years of age the ink infant you have the optimal infant and ink child feeding practices and they are begin breastfeeding within an hour exclusively breastfeed for the first 6 months complementary feeding after 6 months and continue breastfeeding for 2 years and beyond it's very well documented that babies neonates have a higher risk of neonatal mortality when the initiation of breastfeeding is delayed when the breastfeeding is initiated of almost after 3 days there is 6 times more death at risk of death and so always whenever possible at all times within 1 hour is the recommendation that we have to put the newborn baby to the mother's breast exclusive breastfeeding what does it mean giving an infant only breast milk with of course the exception of a few drops or syrups that contain vitamin or mineral supplements or drugs that might be prescribed but otherwise no food or drink other than breast milk not even water till 6 months that is what we mean by exclusive breast feeding what are the benefits these are just to highlight some it of course supports babies growth and development it definitely looks at reduction in overweight in babies it has proven to reduce allergies and eczemas breastfed children are well prevented against pneumonia diarrhea and also ear infections definitely the bonding with the mother and child is pretty high breastfed babies there is optimal brain development and hence a greater iq has been reported and boost the immune system reducing the rate of infections these are just to rate a few of the benefits essential benefits in the newborn infant what are the benefits for the mother it reduces the risk of breast and ovarian cancer prevents postpartum depression and type 2 diabetes helps a mother to lose weight after childbirth bonds definitely between the mother and child and hence a happy family breastfeeding and complementary feeding is always a continuum as i said the first 6 months is exclusively breastfeeding and then you continue from the 7th month to 2 years along with the solid food that is introduced so what are the stages of breast milk production the composition that we talk of breast milk varies with the time and as the time proceeds so the first production of milk on the first from birth to 3 to 5 days is what we have called the colostrum so volume wise quantity wise is just 10 to 40 ml per day that, that is produced but this is a nutrient dense liquid high in protein easy to digest has all the immunoprotective factors and has laxative action too 
Thereafter, the next few days till the two weeks is the transitional milk. This milk, the volume has increased. You have a higher, better quantity, about 100 to 500 ml per day. There's more calories, fats, and sugars provided. After the 14 days is what we have as the mature milk, which again, quantity-wise, there's almost 680 to 700 ml per day that is produced. And these contain all the major nutrients required for the baby's growth. Per feed, with each feed, again, there's a variation in the composition of the milk produced. The initial milk that first when the baby suckles is the four milk. This is typically rich in plenty of fluids, water. Mainly the composition is water and carbohydrates, that is lactose. So this milk initially satisfies the baby. And later, the second part of the milk as the baby continues suckling is the hind milk. And this is rich in fats and protein and of course high in calories so this is the milk that satisfies the baby the baby's hunger so the composition of milk of breast milk varies from the days of birth and also with each feed so this every breastfeeding mother has to be told and they have to understand why we insist on consecutively breastfeeding the baby for long, right? And then the important thing that every breastfeeding mother has to know is the size of a newborn infant's stomach is just the size of a small cherry on day one. That is, it can hardly take in five to seven ml of the milk which is nothing but one to one and a half teaspoons. It's only by day three that as a baby grows in, the size of the tummy moves up to a size of a walnut. So that's about 25 ml of milk is what it can hold. And moving on after a week to the size of an apricot, and it's only by one month old baby has a size of a large egg, wherein 80 to 150 ml of milk can be housed. So the concern that most young mothers usually have, oh, I'm hardly getting any milk, or will that be sufficient for the baby? I hope this addresses that. It is more than enough. Nature's creation is such that each time the baby is suckling, it's getting in the required amount of milk. And as I earlier said, the composition changes from days to day. So obviously, as required for a one week old baby or two week old baby, the requirement is met. So this period, that is the period from pregnancy, that is from conception, till the child's first two years of life, what we typically call the first thousand days of life of a child, is the most critical window of opportunity. Critical window for, of opportunity for what? For providing the right nutrition such that not only to prevent any undernutrition or malnutrition, but also for all the benefits that this baby needs for life. And so this critical window starts, of course, from pregnancy, lactation period, which is what we are talking of now, the six months of lactation, and further down for two years. The occurrence of all non-communicable diseases is basically programmed by this exposure to these earlier diets, including also the type of the milk that the baby has got. That actually influences the development of diseases later in adult life. This is what we usually talk of Any stimulus or any insult, what we mean is any way during the growth factor, any stimulus or insult that is applied at this critical period of this two years of life or these thousand days 
period of development, this results in a long term or a permanent effect on the structure and function of that organism. This hypothesis is famously called the developmental origins of health and disease to had. So that is why this thousand day period is the most critical period for all wide because it does have an impact on health in later life. So if growth is altered during pregnancy, birth or during the weaning phase, it does have an impact on leading to diseases in adults and if there's optimal growth, it leads on to a healthy adult. So what are the long term effects then on breastfeeding? As I said, first six months, every child should be exclusively breastfed with partial breastfeeding continued till two years of age. And the long term effects, hence, have been seen in terms of overweight obesity, breastfeeding's impact on blood pressure and serum cholesterol, breastfeeding has an impact on leading to must be type 2 diabetes, and of course, intelligence levels. Let me just share a few points on how I would say this has an impact. With respect to obesity, breastfeeding might be an effective way to prevent the development of obesity. What is the plausible reasoning given? As we know, breast milk, there is a difference in protein intake and energy metabolism for a breastfed or a formula fed kid. The lower protein intake and reduced energy metabolism is often reported among breastfed infants. And hence, this difference in the hormonal response and insulin response among breastfed and formula fed has plausible reasons why that formula feeding leads to greater insulin response resulting in fat deposition and increased number of adipocytes so it starts all right from this stage of infancy itself that is we are giving in the type of nutrition that comes from breast milk and from formula milk actually decides how the insulin response, basic insulin resistance that or response that develops at this time and where, how it can impact on the fat deposition and the formation of the, because this is a stage where cells are being formed, so adipocytes, the number of adipocytes start increasing and obviously that can always have an impact. So breastfeeding has shown to decrease obesity rates by up to 30%. With respect to type 2 diabetes, breastfeeding has been, is being considered protective against type 2 diabetes. This is mainly because the plausible reason given, fasting blood glucose is, all, is inversely correlated to the long chain PUFAs in the skeletal muscle membranes. And breast milk has a large amount of these long term long chain PUFAs compared to, but you don't find this in the formula milk. So that is a plausible reasoning wherein to say that we keep this considered protective against type 2 diabetes too. As regards intelligence, the two main fatty acids that is docosahexanoic acid, DHA and arachidonic acids are important for the retinal and cortical part of the brain development. And again, these two fatty acids are present in abundance in breast milk, but not in the most brands of the formula milk. Coming to blood pressure also, in adults, the blood pressure, as we know, is influenced by early life exposures. So it can be intrauterine growth, catch-up growth, and the infant feeding. So again here, breast milk, there is a difference in the sodium content, fatty acid content, and could be a plausible reason for breastfed infants to have lesser chances of getting into blood pressure, higher blood pressure concerns. Now moving on to yet another interesting concept or benefit that we notice in from breast milk. The shaping up of the infant gut microbiota. Of late, since the COVID pandemic has stuck Everyone is frantically looking at how can they improve their immunity. And we have been repeatedly been telling immunity is not something that comes in overnight. It's something that you build through life. 
and it starts actually at conception and at birth and the gut microbiota or the gut microbiome that is the beneficial or the bacterial load or the microbial load in our gastrointestinal tract has an impact on what it plays on immunity the intestinal microbiome plays a very important role in maintaining health throughout life the microbiota develops progressively after birth and is influenced by many factors including the mode of delivery so if you see it the maternal factors that influence the infant's microbiota the mother's maternal nutrition her body mass index weight gain during pregnancy all has an impact on the infant's microbiota the placenta the amniotic fluid has an impact the mode of delivery has a massive impact on to decide what is the load whether it is c section or vaginal delivery and the antibiotic exposure of course reduces the microbiota breast milk and formula feeding i'll actually show you how breast milk can actually improve the microbiota the gut microbiome establishment of this in early life has a substantial impact on subsequent health as i said colonization of the infant microbiome begins at delivery itself so when the infants can acquire many different types of bacteria from the environment vagina skin and intestine of their mothers too it should be known that it takes about 3 years for a child to develop an intestinal microbiome composition similar to adults so this first 3 years are the crucial time for it to actually develop a good load of microbiome what is this relation that i'm talking about milk microbiome and neonatal colonization human milk as we all know is the gold standard of infant nutrition apart from all the nutrients that we all talk about the macro the micronutrients there are various multiple biologically active components too in breast milk the immune factors and of which human milk oligosaccharides the hmo plays a massive and a very important role in this colonization of the gut microbiome microorganisms have hence emerged as an important bioactive component of human milk it is also shaped by the mode of delivery breast milk microbes are an important source as i said of the colony microbes for the breastfed infant cesarean section delivery was associated with reduced breast milk microbiota diversity and richness than vaginal delivery the intestinal microbes of the neonates delivered by cesarean delivery appears to be less diverse in terms of delivery bacteria species than the microbiota of vaginal delivery delivered infants how it affects during vaginal delivery the contact with the maternal vaginal and intestinal flora is an important source for the start of the infant's colonization so the seeding that we say the first load of what seed that we have to given actually comes in from the vaginal delivery which this when this in cesarean delivery this direct contact is absent and so non maternally derived environmental bacteria play a key important role for the infants intestinal colonization so the first seed that the infant has to get seeding of microbes is different in vaginal and c section delivered babies so if the intestinal flora develops differently depending on the mode of delivery obviously the postnatal development of immune system will also be different so just to summarize in vaginal delivery the exposure to vaginal microflora is there normal microbial seeding of the gi tract happens and hence normal development of immunity whereas in a c section delivery there is lack of exposure to this vaginal microflora abnormal microbial seeding of the gi tract is happening and hence abnormal development of immunity can be expected but then what is this importance of then breast milk 
maternal milk is a critically is very is critically important to the development of this neonatal microbiota the bioactive components that i mentioned earlier specifically the human milk oligosaccharides that is the hmo lactoferrin secretory hormone they modify the components of the neonatal microbiota the transfer of milk from the mother to the child has a direct effect on the development of immune system and hence the prevention of neonatal infection so that is the wonder that our breast milk provides by one month both vaginal and c section infant cannot be separated based upon the composition of their microbiota so though the infant might not have got the initial seeding of the microbiome which it requires by one month a breastfed infant if both these babies whether delivered by vaginal or c section by just exclusively breastfeeding it has been shown that you cannot differentiate these two babies so consistent breastfeeding has produced this change and that's the importance of breast milk in altering the gut microbiota and getting it to a beneficial level so if breastfeeding is so important how frequent should it be should it be a timed feed or on demand definitely it should be as per the baby's demand moving on to when we are talking of exclusively breastfeeding there are certain parameters certain components that every young mother should be aware of good positioning is an important component here for good breast milk formation head and body should be in line whole body should be supported the baby turned towards the mother baby's tummy should be touching the mother's eye to eye contact is needed also good latching also plays a very important role in good milk formation the mouth should be wide open lower lip curled out upper areola visible but not lower areola chin should be touching the breast and no pain for the mother while the baby sucks so all this is very important when you're looking at good milk formation so just to show you some of the breastfeeding positions this is a cradle position or a cross cradle position football position we usually recommend for mothers with twins a double football position where you hold both and support with a pillow lying down position and the attachment as i said when you look from the outside appearance the areola has to be completely covered this is just to show you the difference in the correct attachment and the incorrect attachment but the latching on to the breast so what are the reasons we still hear many young mothers coming back and telling us that they discontinued breastfeeding early the reasons that may put mothers at risk for terminating breastfeeding than desired are usually of three major reasons lactational problems nutritional problems or medical lactational the trouble with the infant suckling or latching on the mother has a sore or cracked or bleeding nipples this breast engorgement breast infected or abscess nutritional most of the time it's the mother's perception of not having enough milk that she tends to give up breastfeeding alone didn't satisfy the baby and the mother is concerned that the infant's weight is not increasing so they tend to give up too early and move on to formula feeding medical problems of course are there the mother's sickness on being on medication baby sickness couldn't breastfeed and sometimes the pumping factors of pumping milk being a concern now any of these reasons are definitely to be addressed a lactational trained lactational counselor a nurse can always be taken support of and all these problems all these concerns can be addressed and always look at relatching back what we talk of there is no reason that you didn't the baby didn't suckle for a day two days no you have always going back is what is advocated let me just go through some myths 
that usually come up with breastfeeding and lactation. Most mothers feel that baby nurses all the time means he's not getting enough milk. This is not true. You should understand that when a baby sucks more, he is actually going to make more milk. The storage capacity of the breast, of course, varies. So always remember, when there is more sucking, there is more milk. When there is less sucking, there is less milk. And if there is no sucking, then there is no milk. There is no other reason where there cannot be breast milk. Yet on the myth that we always get to hear from others is if you breast feel soft and you get not, nothing when you squeeze, there is no more milk left in the breast. This is again not true. You should understand the process of breast milk formation is from a reflex from the baby suckling. It is always increased by positive emotions, thoughts, smell and sight of the baby and a little breast or back massage that can help in increasing the secretion. It is usually decreased by negative emotions in the mother. There is fear, there is worry, sadness, stress or even pain as I earlier showed in the because of a cracked nipple that can decrease but otherwise there is no reason you should be calm and allow the baby to suckle more and there is more. And the myth that we usually get to hear is frequent nursing is often regarded as pacifying with the breast. The baby is learning to suck, hence suck more often. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that it's working just as a pacifier. If a baby is given a pacifier instead, the baby cannot tell the mother that she needs to produce milk. Please understand that it's only the baby suckling which stimulates the breast to start secreting. So the letdown reflex, the oxytocin, the hormone gets let down to let down the milk only if a baby suckles, not by giving a pacifier. Yet on the myth we get to hear is the mother should drink more milk to produce more breast milk. Not true. The mother has to drink among all the liquids enough fluids so keeping oneself well hydrated with any liquid along with a balanced diet is what is important for good milk formation. Infants, do they need water in addition to being breastfed? Definitely not. Breast milk is the richest milk which has almost 88% in water. So you don't need to give additional any water for the baby till six months of age. Each time on demand feed, the more you're giving your baby your breast milk, you are giving the hydration required. A neonate cries predominantly because of inadequate breast milk. This is again a common concern that mothers always are worried about. Please understand it's not true. There are several reasons that a neonate cries it can be wanting just to be picked up or some discomfort or be in pain. So it's not just inadequate milk alone being a reason for the baby's cry. Some mothers have this concern that nursing a baby after 12 months of age is of little value because the quality of breast milk begins to decline after six months. The composition of human milk changes to meet the changing needs of the baby. I had earlier discussed in my earlier slide to show you that it moves right from birth, from day one to day two and to two weeks and one month itself. There's a change in the composition as the need of the baby, the requirement need. So similarly, the breast milk composition changes to meet the changing needs. During first year, it is a primary source of nutrition, yes. But for the second year, it is a supplement to the solids provided. So breast milk has a complete purpose when we say that it has to be given for two years. Immunity of the child, you should understand, is fully matured between two and six years of age. So that's why till two years, providing that immunity through the breast milk is important. Human milk boosts this immune system for as long as it is offered. So it is beyond the second year, why we say it has to be a supplement to the solids given, apart from nutrition, 
it has a wonderful immune booster which can keep the baby's immunity levels much higher for a store for later in life also if you see the nutritional needs just to get you uh, this one in the second year if you look at this is the percentage uh, of uh, daily needs of energy provided by half 500 ml of breast milk so yes it provides only 37 kilo calories 55 uh, grams of protein but the remaining so that's why we say is to be filled up with the complementary food so whatever nutrients we usually support with complementary feeding from seventh month is to fill up this gap so breast milk in the second year yes would have a difference in their nutrition but that is met by the complementary feed and we ask you all to continue breast milk for the other benefits mainly the immune boosting mechanism yet another prominent thing that we get to hear is breast milk the mother should not breastfeed if suffering from any infection please remember breastfeeding will pass antibodies to the baby that will help the baby fight the infection and get better faster so definitely even care should be taken depending on the type of infection that the mother has but breastfeeding can be continued so the mother does not transfer the infection it's basically the antibodies that is going in and so that is a protective factor for the baby so those interested can actually look into for more detailed information for breastfeeding during covid-19 onto this link that who has given in so then uh when you compare why we say breast milk is the best if you look at the nutrients also human milk has adequate lactose and easy to digest whereas any animal milk the lactose content is difficult to digest when we look at the protein it has a correct amount of protein and an easy to digestible form but animal milk has too much of a protein and it's difficult to digest the fats the essential fats that the newborn infant requires is present whereas there are no essential fatty acids that comes from the animal milk minerals are adequate whereas when you're going into animal milk there is too much calcium sodium potassium and phosphorus which strains the body's baby's kidneys water as i earlier showed is adequate in human milk when you're giving animal milk you need to give extra vitamin d is present insufficient in human milk in human milk anti infective product Uh, properties are present which is completely absent in animal milk so the dangers of infant formula for your child when you feed your baby infant formula you are increasing the chances of asthma and allergies respiratory infections digestive problems and of course obesity and type 2 diabetes and for the mother when you don't breastfeed you increase your own chance of developing diabetes overweight and obesity cancers hypertension cardiovascular diseases and of course reduces the child's pace so i conclude with the recommendations being start breastfeeding within 1 hour of birth practice exclusive breastfeeding from birth to 6 months introduce appropriate complementary feeding after 6 months of age and sustain the breastfeeding for 2 years and beyond and of course there is hiv positive mothers you need to counsel them to choose infant feeding which is more suitable to them and support their decision whatever it may be so do continue breastfeeding up to 2 years and beyond for both a long healthy life i would actually conclude by saying breastfeeding is an investment in health not just a lifestyle decision thank you Wow, uh, that uh, that is uh, the richness and the mystery of uh, breastfeeding, Nata. Thank you for right. such a wonderful uh, elucidation and uh, very simply, very coolly you put it across uh, for everyone. And the young uh, students or young mothers or would be mothers, I think uh, um, uh, this is a very good uh, introduction for them. And definitely and. Uh, Uh, the theme for this uh, 2020 uh, breastfeeding week is the breastfeeding for healthier planet and the covid being here i think future 
requires definitely a healthy uh, planet and uh, right. breastfeeding is the initial uh, the first stage or the first seed that uh, uh, a woman can uh, start with her her might her contribution to the planet right thank you so much uh, lata and the forum is open for uh, questions anybody if you have any questions please uh, go ahead uh, lata ma'am we have a first yes. question from facebook audience yes so dietitian right. samira is asking ma'am if mother is suffering from covid 19 positive with the newborn baby too breastfeeding should be continued or not yes that's what i have shared the link uh, breastfeeding should be continued with all precautions so if the mother is covid positive and has symptoms she should take precautions of wearing a mask at all times keeping the baby at only while breastfeeding getting otherwise she should be kept at a distance and she could continue breastfeeding so please check on i have shared the link if you need we can share that along and uh, there is a very good infographic given by who which actually gives us the uh, all the steps on what precautions you have to take while uh, breastfeeding and otherwise also but you need to continue breastfeeding as recommended okay uh there is another question amara siddiqui ma'am what is your opinion on galactogox can they be recommended both natural and synthetic uh galactogox do not have a complete evidence to say that it is helpful so across various sciences whether it is naturopathy we have in ayurveda various galactogox available and traditionally we have many that have shown to be helpful but there is no systematic review till now which concludes saying that it is it is this which will help for everyone right so whatever is traditionally practiced can be continued hydration is the most important thing to remember so when someone asks me about ma'am can i drink ajwain water can i drink fennel tea yes it's helpful because hydration is the key for good lactation so whatever fluids you are taking if you are well hydrated your nipple is softer so the baby suckles well and it is this suckling that actually stimulates good milk so all the galactogogs that have shown have a link towards making the baby suckle better so it can vary from a person to person so when we say there is no conclusive evidence from a systematic review we are only telling that if we have not seen it replicating for the same galactogog giving the same benefit to all mothers has not been seen that is the only difference so we are not saying you cannot be used the synthetic galactogogs i have no uh, uh, comments on it because again we don't practice it for the simple reason that we don't have any scientific conclusive evidence okay uh, we have other other question from gauri priya she is asking uh, two years and beyond any specific range to continue breastfeeding after two years and why now any particular reason if you ask gauri priya uh, not any particular reason but as you as i just said you can continue but if you notice that the baby is natural intake that is the solid food intake is reducing because of constant suckling yes you need to wean off the baby but otherwise there is no reason you can continue beyond 2 years also as i said it's more from a point of an emotional bonding so unless you prepare the baby to actually wean off from the mother the emotional bonding has to be taken care of first the baby has to understand and only then taken on but from a nutritional perspective we need to be careful that is the baby getting the bear, his or her right nutrition because some babies who continuously suckle even beyond 2 years and not eat well and if there is a growth faltering that we notice we need to take advantage or take a concern for slowly weaning off the kid but otherwise yes you can continue feeding the baby 